Yo, what's good YouTube? It's Borzy, and this is going to be a video about the product, mainly the mice that are actually on my desk on a day-to-day -day basis. One of the most common questions I'm asked is, what do I actually use? So I'm just going to explain why I have seven mice on my desk, because um, obviously as a reviewer, I'm not going to have one main that I'm just using every day. So I'll go through mice one by one, not going to be too in-depth. First off, we have the Final Mouse Starlight Tens Edition. I did just get this two days ago. This is the medium size. They have the new Infinity skins, and it feels like a solid um, refresh of the Starlight. It's the same shape, of course. The buttons are still kill 8.0s. The tensioning does seem to have improved a bit, but yeah, all in all, it's still a Starlight. So I just threw it back on my desk, gonna test it, and then post a review pretty soon because this is the uh, last normal Starlight iteration that they are dropping, apparently. Next up, the Razer Death Adder V3 Pro. Since this released, it honestly has not come off my desk, which really did surprise me since I'm not normally a fan of larger Ergo or EC-inspired shapes, but to be completely honest, for claw grip, I think I prefer the shape over the super low-profile Viper Ultimate. And combining the perfect side button, solid build quality, great weight for the size, good weight balancing there's really like no flaws with the mouse in my opinion it just feels very natural in the hand no issues like micro adjusting or any type of aiming with the death adder um, so i do have a lot of praise for this mouse it's honestly one of my mains which was not expecting to say um, viper vg pro everybody knows the deal if you are looking for a wireless fk style shape the viper ultimate is definitely the way to go um, it's solid for fingertip i would not say it feels as good in the hand as a medium starlight but considering like availability and the price i think a viper vg pro is a very solid um, like you can settle for a Viper VG Pro if you're looking for a medium starlight and don't want to pay the premium. It is going to be around 7 grams more, but it is going to have better tech, the optical switches. So it's going to come down to what you prefer. Um, but yeah, ultimately those are going to be similar mice. This, the Lamzu Atlantis, I did just get very recently. I'd been waiting for it forever. This is a mouse that is honestly very similar to the XM1 in terms of shape. It's not an identical clone. Um, but let me just show you guys the unboxing experience because this shit is honestly crazy. The mouse does weigh 55 grams, by the way, with a full shell. Um, but yeah, the unboxing experience. When I opened this up, I was like, what the hell? This is the company's first mouse. So yeah, I don't know. I personally found the unboxing experience to be really premium. And for a first mouse, I am just so impressed with the Atlantis. There's no quality issues at all. The click implementation is extremely premium. I think it's using... Quano pink dot switches? I could be wrong. But yeah, the Atlantis has a 3395 sensor, solid build quality, 55 grams, and I believe it retails for $90. So I am going to post a full review soon. It is on my desk because I'm testing it. Um, but this seems like it has potential to be like one of the best mice of 2022. Um, pretty similar to the Pulsar X2, honestly, but just with a shape that is going to feel much more familiar to the XM1 in hand. The Pulsar X2 is another mouse that I've had on my desk since the review of it. I think the mini version, especially of the X2, is a great mouse for fingertip, and these 3395, like, solid performance mice available for under $100, it's really a good thing for the mouse scene. I don't like the Pulsar medium shape for claw grip as much as something like a GPX, and I would say um, with the sale that the GPX is on, it's worth paying the extra $20 more. It is going to be a higher quality experience, in my opinion, than the X2. Um, and yeah, the GPX, what do I have to say about it, man? It's the GPX. It's been on my desk since December of 2020. I've talked about this thing uh, my fair bit. I don't think it will really ever be leaving because whenever it will start to fade out of relevance, Logitech will just refresh the shape um, in a few years. So that's that. The Vaxi XE. This is a mouse that I am just testing. It's a wired mouse from Vaxi, but I just feel like it's a really good shape. It's a mouse that I kind of hate to love uh, because getting it, I was like, man, a wired mouse with a removable cable. This just seems like a troll, like wireless prototype, but I actually use the mouse. And I'm like, damn, this is a good shape. So I'm kind of in that position right now where it's a good mouse gonna review it soon but it's not something that will likely stay on my desk after the review and i'm um, hopefully vaxi can enter the wireless mouse game 
And I think that's all. Oh, wait, shit. The uh, Hello Kitty Mouse. This is not a wireless Viper Mini. I hope that did not troll anybody. Um, this is a wired Viper Mini that I just removed the wire from, and I'm going to get a wireless mod commissioned on it. Um, but yeah, the shell is kind of just chilling on my desk. I guess I'll add some extra value to this video by uh, talking about the keyboard as well. So this is a Wooting 60 HE. Come on. Yeah, fucking focus. Um, it's a Wooting 60 HE, but in a Blade 60 case with a lighter spring spring swap. So now these springs are just so extremely light. I don't know if you'll be able to notice, but man, these springs feel light. I am getting a lot of typing errors with 0.1 actuation. But that is what it takes to have the fastest keyboard in the world. And also, this is a fully custom QK65 with novel key... Novel key, novel key cream switches. Obviously, keyboards are not my forte, and obviously, I would not build something premium and actually good like this. This was literally gifted to me by Dindo Garcia at BoardsyCon. Absolute shout out to him. He literally drove up from Maryland to BoardsyCon to gift me this. So that was absolutely legendary. I've been using it, and it's honestly like a joy to type on. It sounds sounds really fucking good. And honestly, this premium keyboard was the reason why I decided to put my 60HE in a different case. By the way, I did not do any of the work on this either. Shout out to your Cloudy for doing the mods for me. Massive uh, Discord member and also a reviewer on the tube. So feel free to check both of them out. I'll link them in the description. Shout out to him for helping with my keyboard journey. Um, and mouse pads, I'm not even going to waste any time. This is the Esport Tiger Wujiang 2. Um, it's a really interesting speed pad. I'm going to drop an updated Esport Tiger roundup soon. But with mouse pads, folks, just get an artisan mouse pad. Trust me. That's all you need. Um, you can watch my other mouse pad reviews. Feel free to, but really, you can just go get an Artisan Heian Soft, an Artisan Zero Soft, an X Soft, whatever the fuck you want. Just get an Artisan pad and then be done with it. Mouse pad's not really a rabbit hole you need to go too deep into, but I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Really just a different style of video going over the products that are actually on my desk on a day-to-day -day basis. If you're wondering what happens to the products I don't use, I'll toss a few pictures up, but make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Leave any questions in the comments below and peace.